Hey, Freedom Lovers, welcome to the Freedom Lover Show. We're building a voluntary world, one relationship at a time. I'm your host, David James Rodriguez, and today we have an outstanding guest. I'm super excited because I consider him to be one of the top producers on planet Earth, not just because he influenced me working with John Taylor Gatto and learning about the history of the school system, but the NSA spying and a plethora of other um, interviews that he's done and just out there being courageous and being an example. And so we have uh, a great opportunity to learn about something he's putting out there to empower you as parents, as students, as people who want to become free. As you know, independence, um, and actually the name of his program is called Autonomy, and I'll let him get into that in a second here, um, but just want to ex- let you all know how special um, this guy is and uh, what, a, what a great opportunity it is to learn about what's happening, how to build freedom, this voluntary world where we don't have to use coercion, we can use consensual relationships as all peaceful, nice, moral people do. And uh, as we know, the state is intergenerational organized crime, just corrupting us um, from the from the uh, school systems and everything else. But we're not going to try to fight against that. We're going to make them obsolete by building models that make them do that. So uh, just transcending that current model. And so before we get into it, I want to welcome to the show, Mr. Richard Grove. Rich, welcome to the show. Good evening, Dave. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks for that, that uh, snappy intro. I feel that's kind of hard to live up to. Uh, it's going to take some work on my end, and that's uh, that's nothing new. I don't mind a little hard work. And you being well versed with all the problems that I'm interested in, it's always a pleasure to make room in my schedule to have a little rap session. Yep, definitely it is. And then you've been doing this for I would say over ten years, and uh, seeing the problems and interesting background. You're you know, connected with the personal experience through nine eleven, and this is a whole nother thing. I mean, guys, he really is an interesting figure and a nice guy, a married man, a father. Um, so someone who uh, has a great knowledge to share. But today, I want to introduce um, your program called Autonomy. Because as many of our listeners and viewers know, when you go through 12 years of compulsory schooling, it makes learning no fun. And it makes you think like you achieve something, get in a piece of paper. And some of us, including me, went to college and spent tens of thousands of dollars um, in a classroom, again, learning from people who maybe did the work or maybe didn't. But in my definition, an education is what we do to create a good life. And that's something that nobody can give us. It's something we can facilitate, something we can you know, go to the gym and do for ourselves, do the heavy lifting. It's nice to have some learning partners with us. And um, I consider you to be one of these guys. And you create something that's really powerful. So as I mentioned, it's called autonomy. And let's just kind of start what is autonomy? And then we can get into some of the reasons you started it, perhaps some of the curriculum, and most importantly, the benefits to these parents, to these students out there who want to have a successful life. They want to be free. They want to be healthy. And uh, there's not a lot of programs out there that are teaching this, especially in the state schools and in universities, which are products. Um, but this is something that's going to be empowering them in a way that I've not seen on the market. And so back to the first question, what is Autonomy. Uh, autonomy is a course of breakthrough actions, and it's designed to help you write your own script in life and live a lifestyle of freedom. And there's a couple components of that that aren't automatically there in our culture. We go through 15,000 hours of compulsory education, but we don't come out with the knowledge we need to survive and thrive in the world uh, at a level that should be expected after an investment of such a, a large amount of time. And if you go to college, a large amount of money, not just your money, you might indenture yourself and your future for that money. Your parents might, uh, give up a whole lot of, uh, their free time in the future to pay for college for their kids. Right. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of dynamics that are there and really the skills that I'm teaching colleges and university structures, they won't teach their students because they're very much about indoctrination and not education. And the same for the school systems themselves. They're about indoctrination. They're about leading with declarative sentences. The only question marks they use are at the end of a chapter or on a quiz or a test. And true learning starts with observations, ask questions, and then finds declarative answers as the decision or conclusion so that you can take actions in life and repeatedly get consistent results that bring you satisfaction. And so it's possible to get these things we want, but you can't get there from here to use a movie term. When you're coming from schooling, you need to fill that gap with serious skills, high value skills. If you want to excel yeah. out of the rat race. Yep, absolutely. And that's a great point because in the system, they teach us to work for other people, but that quote, you kind of riffed on about writing our own script. And I've heard other people say that too, but you are the 
writer, you're the producer, you're the director, and the main actor in your own movie, as am I, as is um, everyone else. And so once we discover that, it's like, wow. I mean, there's a big kind of like, there's excitement and there's joy and hope. And there's like a lot of work is burden. And I think one of the most important things is having a community of people that understand that too. So when we're looking at each other, we're like, man, we want to do this. Yeah, it's, it's up to us rather than extending it to a third party out there who's going to do it for us and make our life easy while we can sit on the beach. Well, if we want to sit on the beach, we should do the heavy lifting, do the work, put in the effort and face the challenges that are there. And so, um, so that's awesome. Yeah, it is a, a course of action. I love that it's to get out of the rat race. And what would you say to somebody who um, has now become interested in getting out of the rat race as we all are? And I saw on your page over 80% of people uh, dislike their current jobs. And that's because we go through this story of someone else telling us how to live our life. And very rarely do we sit down and have some quiet time, whether you believe in God or nature or universe, and sit down and ask, what am I doing here? What is this all about? And how can I find true fulfillment, true joy? and true meaning, and unfortunately, it is not through money. Hey, money's good, it pays the bills, we, we feed our family, this is great, but if we're only spending our life doing that, it becomes a very, um, I would say, dissatisfying venture, and um, so, but many of us are doing that because of the industrial economy and the people that want to control us and have us be their worker beast for life instead of being our own independent disruptors, creatives, powerful people, which we're born to be. I truly believe that, as a, you know, Gatto said, um, each, our education should be as unique as our fingerprints. And Buck, Mr. Fuller, every child is a born genius. The challenge is they get de-genius trying to please their teachers and please their parents. So that is truly a belief that I have. And I've uh, realized that through observation and interaction and seeing people that maybe in the school system, they have a couple different metrics, language and math. But even the guy at Harvard, you know, Howard Gardner, so there's nine types of intelligences. And I think there's actually over 7 billion types of intelligences. So how to find that, what would you say is the starting point? So let's talk a little bit about the curriculum that's inside because with this framework that we set up, understanding what's going on in the schools and how it's disempowering. And uh, you mentioned observation, which is super powerful. What is the first step as they enter the course? And then we can go through uh, perhaps some of the, uh, the following steps also. That's good. And you, uh, you wove two questions in there. Very clever, Dave. Very clever. All right. So I'm going to weave it all together. So let's go back to the 87% of people who are uh, displeased, dissatisfied with their jobs. That means 13% of people are spending most of their time, a third of their life, doing something that makes them feel satisfied or feel substantial or meaningful. That's sad. But that's the output already of the system that exists. So if we want that to change, are we expecting the system to deliver a different result off the conveyor belt? No. So we have to go outside and we see, are there any things that we can learn from outside of the school system that might point us in the right direction? Gatto says in Wep Weapons of Mass Instruction, if you don't learn how to write your own script in life, you're going to be living a life written, uh, it's a script written by other people. But he's pointing. He's like, it's over that way, guys, right? But to get there, that freedom takes responsibility. It takes self-direction. It takes self-motivation. It takes confidence and competence that come from practicing with other people, not just watching PowerPoints and internalizing. It's also cogitating it and externalizing it through the active literacies. The active yeah. literacies yeah. are uh, writing, uh, public speaking, group communication, problem solving, negotiation, all these different types of communication. So the way I structured the course was there's a lot of different issues. There's a lot of different underlying problems. They have root causes. Yeah. We can get into all that, but how do we fix it? Yeah. All right. So the first yeah. thing I do in the course is I spend the first couple of lectures, the first couple of weeks of the course, uh, unindoctrinating those who show up. From the learned helplessness, the provisional scarcity, uh, provisional self-esteem, scarcity mindsets, these sort of limiting beliefs, these self-limiting beliefs. The mind is supposed to be infinite. Reality has plenty of scarcity and limitations, right? So just first, undoing those limitations that are self-imposed or re-encouraged or instilled or installed by the school system maintained by mass media. Then, well, on top of that, you install uh, a culture of excellence. 
So you provide an environment that offers the skills and a room like place to practice where it's all nerfed up and nobody gets their feelings hurt to practice these skills of communication. We start with the interview because that's somebody that anybody of any age can learn how to ask questions and listen and listening is the main skill of the interview process. From there, we add on other high value skills, teach about sales, uh, closing, marketing, copywriting, web design, how to be an entrepreneur, what all the hats are and why you shouldn't try to wear all those hats. Now, that leaves you with doing something that's the highest and best use of your time, but it also leaves you with a bunch of hats you don't know how to wear. So what we do is we educate the students about those hats, and then you're around other students who have proficiencies in those areas of expertise. You don't have to be your own copywriter or graphic designer because there's other students who do that. They're either learning and they're looking to do some free work for a testimonial, or they do it professionally and they'll cut you a friend deal because you guys are going through the course together. So there's a lot of opportunities that open up once people can get past the fear of the unknown and these sort of things. They do enough research, insight, collection of information about the course to get past the uh, the barriers to entry. Like there's the landing page, there's a survey, and I and I do enrollment calls to make sure that anyone coming in the course has realistic goals that can be achieved with the tools we provide, and also because we have a superb group of people that are learning and having fun and gaining momentum, and we don't want any turds in the punch bowl. So I'm the doorman, <laughs> and this is the process through which uh, thus far 261 students have gotten in. And uh, at some point, I'll have to give that up and hand it off to graduates to do those calls. But right now, it's still one of the highest and best uses of my time to have those conversations, to structure those plans, regardless of whether or not they move on with the course. Like, just because we're making a plan and solving a problem doesn't mean you have to say, uh, sign up. You walk away from the call with options, ideas motivation and uh oh by the way there's also the course if you should like it mm-hmm. right and one of the things people will notice when they look up your work is that you provide a huge amount of value a lot of times for free and so you're well aware of economics and how it works and some of the people who may not know you just got to give value right and, and you just keep giving value and at some point people are going to realize that guy gives value And so that's what I've seen with you. And I think a lot of people, because of the school system and media, as you mentioned, people don't believe in their potential. You know, people don't believe that they're worth it. You know, they're they're only worth it if they're making a lot of money or they're only worth it if they get the grades or the PhD or something or the, you know, whatever uh, accolade, some certification, but there's innate worth in all of us. What would you share with somebody who maybe, let's say, maybe they're a parent and they want they have a job that they really don't like and they have some type of passion they have some type of like hobby that they enjoy but they just don't believe that they have the potential maybe it is as you mentioned to you know use their best and highest use of their time to do that thing and kind of build a little team and but they, they know deep down they are a superstar they are a champion but now they're in their 30s they're in their 40s and they're kind of looking around they don't have a support network and if they could just get a glimpse of that potential, if they could just get a glimpse of what it would be like to not be attached to their learned helplessness, but actually to be empowered to their full potential, and, and they're looking for something or, or maybe some type of insight to themselves that you, you might have because you've been working with you know, dozens of students here and working with, you know, I would say, um, you know, probably hundreds and thousands of people over the, the decades you've been producing media and just um, your, your um, followers and things like this. What would you share with them regarding their potential and how they might look at themselves differently than how they have in the past? That's an excellent question. And I think that uh, people might be pleased with the insights. The answer is your potential is immense it is one of the things they do not want you to know about tap into start to get a feeling for it is one of the things they don't want you to know they want you to think you're a finished product that you don't need to learn anything else that you're stuck in your station in life and that is completely not true regardless of whatever age you are Uh, the youngest students i've had have been 18 the oldest have been in their 70s and 80s it depends on what you want to do there's a lot of people with unfinished dreams unfinished work in life and if they get around a couple other people and many other people that are trying to do something similar that's a catchy idea and then if they're provided with tools in that environment to excel through those phases and then the interactive immersive intensive feedback that is the course of action they're off to the races they've got new dreams new new information new inspiration new vitality and that works regardless of age 
right? So the, the potential is inside. It needs to be ignited and then catalyzed and directed toward goals of your means. And then next actions must follow. And those actions are a lot easier when you can ask questions, get the answers, take the steps, gain the skills, all in a place designed to do that and expedite that process for you. So I say it's like running a, a martial arts dojo where we teach sets of skills that are useful outside of the dojo. Inside the dojo, you practice with friendly people who are there of their own volition. They practice so that they can take these skills into the outside world. They gain efficiency and repetition of these skills to be able to put them into life fluidly and not haphazardly or like clunkily. Um, and that depends on students showing up. So I say anyone who shows up to the dojo and practices the skills will gain substantial results. And those results will apply to a variety of areas of their life. The only people who can't benefit are the ones who don't show up. They can't, they're not taking themselves seriously. They haven't got past the fear, the learned helplessness, the motivation issues, these sort of things. So the things I screen out are victim mentality and entitlement. Like if you think the world owes you something and you're not ready to work hard, then maybe this course of action is not for you. And if you have, yeah. if you know, the woe is me, everything's somebody else's fault, then this course is definitely not for you because those ideas are antithetical from attaining and maintaining and retaining success in your life. And that's what, you know, the purpose of the intern, like the in, uh, internal enrollment calls, these sort of things. The process is there to create a superb environment so individuals can empower themselves and excel rapidly more rapidly than just wandering around on the internet. Right. Now that's really important too, because like you said, you want to keep the community kind of precious and sacred, you know, the, to value who we're introducing you to, you go through an application process. So it's not just like, you know, we're trying to have you just invest in the course for the money. We want the long-term results in you because whether you're a teenager or in your twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, or eighties, wherever you're at, we want you to be the successful person, be the example, and go out and light other people up, you know, like candles, you know, lighting other people one at a time. And that's why that's our motto. It's one at a time. You and me, us three, us five, us ten, whoever's watching this show, thousands. And then as we take responsibility for, for our lives and realize it's up to us, right? There's that great cliche. If it is to be, it's up to me. And I thought that was real cheesy, you know, something trying to sell me something to go to some you know, program opportunity. But I'm like, no, that's it, man. That really is the, um, the, the solution. And it's the man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror. And as we realize that, we become strengthened with the truth. And so that's another thing I want to bring up. Because if we're trying to become independent, and we don't have to be, earn millions, but I invite you to if you want. But just earning enough so that we can choose how to live our days. And if it's on a passive basis that's great too but if you like consulting and doing pottery or doing dancing or doing music then how to figure out a way so that you can do that and make some money at the same time because that's probably what you'd be doing if you had a billion dollars anyway you'd be doing what you enjoy doing and this can be inhibited by our belief in scarcity and again it goes back to schools and media where we're competing with each other and you know, we're trying to get to the, you know, the top of the list and raise our hands and compete, whereas in true wealth, we're collaborating. And so can you talk a little bit about the belief in prosperity, perhaps how nature is abundant, and that when we are removed from these superficial worlds and into a community, into um, a surrounding, a circle of people who know there's abundance and they're not scarce, but they want to give and they want to grow, and how, it, how important it is to believe and have a mindset of prosperity and abundance. Well, I'm glad you phrased it as prosperity and abundance because some people are just looking for straight up dollars in their bank account. And that's okay for some instances in life. Money is an important tool, but it shouldn't become your single focus in life. And if it's, it's your single focus in life and you've earned a whole bunch, maybe go focus on something else that's more meaningful yeah. and rewarding because otherwise you're going to find yourself being one of those deathbed confessional people wishing they had done other things with their time and money, right? So um, mm -hmm. prosperity starts first off in the mind. It's clearing your mind space. Most of what I teach in the course, it's 80% psychology, tw you know, 20% action. There's a lot of thinking, a lot of cleanup that needs to go for go on in, inside uh, most people who have been through the public school system's head uh, before they can start moving forward and embracing opportunity and not seeing opportunities as threats as fears, yeah. limitations, these sort of things, right? So the prosperity starts mm -hmm. in the mind. It continues out with the goals you have for your household. So in my household and in, in the office upstairs, it's health, 
family, and then business. Because I know if health and family is in line, I can make business okay. Because then I can concentrate, listen, provide value, do that over and over, and I can get to do anything I need to do because I have the skills mm -hmm. and I have the experience and I feel very capable in expressing those. For people who yeah. haven't got to that area in life yet where they have a skill, they know how to make an offer, they know how to transact, they know how to recognize the opportunities where they could go do that likewise over and over again, it's very limiting to get tied into the paycheck mentality, the scarcity, all these things. And then money does become a function of frustration, aggression, um, breaking up families, people getting divorced, these sort of things. It's a lot of stress. Yeah. So I'm not saying you need to be yeah. a billionaire, but it would be good to have enough money to be economically self-reliant. And the way I de define that is enough money to do the things you want to do and to say no to, to the things you don't want to do. Because that's the, <laughs> the essence of freedom right there. You don't any more than that's overkill. So I'm a big fan of like decentralization of power and distribution of knowledge and wisdom to other people because I think when it accumulates in one place and it's not shared, that causes problems. Lord Acton said mm -hmm. power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think that's accurate. Right. And it should be that the knowledge yeah. becomes wisdom only when shared, which is why you create media as an act of literacy to take your input, your processing, and your well-structured outputs and offer it out there so other people can grow and do likewise. So it's about the antithesis right. of control and slavery, and it's really about the responsibilities that bring about freedom, first for yourself, then for your family, and then in your community, because only uh, we can only have stronger communities if we have stronger leadership, and we don't have it coming out of local schooling for those local communities. Right. So I think the only option is Let's reach out to other people online and avail ourselves of their skills and time and the ability to learn from each other and then take that back, that strong leadership and excellence and these sort of things, integrity, back to the communities and let them blossom and unfold naturally as they do when you have people of that aptitude able to take action. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. And through these different institutions that we mentioned, we don't learn to produce, right? We learn to consume. And, you know, you're familiar with the term planned obsolescence. And this consumerism has been almost institutionalized for over 100 years and intentional, you know, by these big barons. And so even thinking about the idea of, like, I'm producing, you know, it can scare a lot of people because, of course, you know, movie producers and things like that. But it's just like, like earning and doing and building and it's not really some amazing thing. It's just the opposite of what we're taught to do. You know, rather than be consumer and, and be passive and take in the media and the marketing and advertising and, and celebrity worship and state worship, now we're, we're, we want to step out of that game and start producing some that is beneficial to our lives. You mentioned health. Was it health, family, business? That's a great priority list. And if people can begin to see themselves that they're in charge, they, they have a locus of control, then I would say the joy and the satisfaction will increase. Um, what type of things do, do your students say regarding consumerism or, or production? Like, is there a transition of, of moving from consumer to producer or does that happen in the first few weeks or does it take months or what have you seen? Well, it happens at different rates for different students depending on what big problem they're trying to solve first. But there are common big problems. One is, let's talk about consumerism. Let's classify consumerism, the sake of consuming, as an activity that brings enjoyment. Because for some people, that's where it's at, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's a function of being through school and not having better ideas of what to do with your time, money, attention, energy, etc. So let's classify that as a liability. It's taking actions without the knowledge and being able to, you know, use it as the highest and best use of your time to leverage it as a as an asset instead of being a liability. So once mm -hmm. one thinks about it, your consumerism could be Netflix, it could be video games, or it could be physical spending on things instead of working on things between your ears to build skills that provide value to other people that bring you success, right? Mm -hmm. So there's the, the 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 liability, the spending mentality, the consumer mentality, and then on the other side there's the investing, the creative, the producer mentality, the person who says I could spend the Sunday working uh, watching football or I could do some thoughtful project that inv unveils unveils some wisdom for other people and that's a that's an investment and an asset that goes out there as active literacy to help other people. So just what I would encourage people doing through the course, because I designed it with parents in mind who are working and trying to transition and build a plan, right? So I try right. to take all the excuses and obstacles out of the way 
but uh, I leave enough work to make it worthwhile. So uh, in that situation, they don't have a lot of time. So I structured it. So the course, you take it uh, for 12 weeks and it's 10% of your time each week, which equates to 16.8 hours because there's 168 hours in a week. And that sounds like a lot of time. But if you take the, the least productive 10% of your time in a week and you make that possibly your most productive time in the week, what's going to happen to your life as a function of doing that for 12 weeks? And then I usually add four bonus weeks to the course that are about consulting and, and going out beyond just having the skill set. Now you have all the skill sets and you use them all in some of these other trades, right? So um, okay. there, there's a lot to it. There's several sub or mini courses within the course that other students have presented on empathic communication techniques, on uh, how to do web development, or how to do live broadcasting. So students, as they develop their interest, they do tutorials for other students to help them on their way. And then we're building out a, a really cool library of tutorials, uh, additional skill sets that are useful. Also under, you know, they're all uh, playing toward your self-reliance, whether it's economic or psychological self-reliance. So you don't have to re re uh, rely on other people to tell you what facts are or how to make your decisions. Right. right? So yeah. it's trying to yeah. get people through that extended adolescence that they come out of school with. They're indoctrinated into that. And Gatto yeah. observes it, but, you know, it needed to go further than where he could take it. And I think that's where you take the observations, you put together the tools and you structure it as an offer. And that's a mm -hmm. demonstration of what a solution might look like. Right. Now, this is very exciting because a lot of things are combining here. And you mentioned the word liability. And we're not talking about accounting. Um, I saw that you did a great interview with uh, Robert Kiyosaki, the uh, number one personal finance expert on planet Earth. And he, he has a great book. And he distinguishes between assets and liabilities. Do you agree with those definitions? Or how do you define those terms or um, negotiate and kind of wrap uh, people's hands or heads around them in the course. That's a that's a good question as well. All right, so I agree with the the ideas that he had set forth originally in Rich Dad Poor Dad and uh, the Cash Flow Quadrant books. I have all his books, and you know, um, I'm not a fan in particular of him. And and look at nobody else. I respect his work, but I also look at other people's work, and he also looks at right. other people's work, right? And Absolutely. I also uh, I have a, I have an unreleased interview that I shot with him. It's a, about an hour long that I did in a hotel mm -hmm. with him in Hartford. So I can, uh, I got to get that done through editing. Uh, but now that you're <laughs> asking about it, maybe I should get that done through editing. Um, yeah, I agree because ca the, the liability takes time, money, attention out of you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So he defines it just as money, but I'll add time, attention, energy. Um, yeah. The asset gives you time, attention, energy, or money. So the asset yeah. could be I listened to this great uh, chalkboard talk by Patrick Bet David, where he's playing both sides of the global warming climate change debate in a really intellectual, mm -hmm. smart way. And that mm -hmm. gave me, that was an asset. That was a good investment of my time. I didn't feel like I spent time taking in that knowledge mm -hmm. that's going to be useful to bridge gaps in the future, right? Good perspective. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You spend, uh, you binge over a whole weekend watching your favorite Netflix series again. Yeah, that should be a cringy. Uh, I just wasted all that time. That was a liability. <laughs> definitely. Let's not do that again. Right. So I think of it just outside <laughs> of economics, right? I just played 48 yes. hours of this video game. And what do you have to take forward from it? How is your life 10 years yeah. from now better because of how you invested your time? No, you spent it. So when you start mm -hmm. looking at how you're like, so I had one student and he created a spreadsheet of how he used every hour in the week and how he allotted mm. his time. And I was like, that's really, you know, nerdy. Good job. I like that. I appreciate that. I'm going to leverage, gonna, gonna leverage it. Awesome. And, share. and he was from the Netherlands. And because I embraced that, uh, and he had embraced like the students and we're having so much fun. He actually came to Hartford. Uh, I interviewed Kiyosaki the second time at the Red Pill Expo. So uh, Philip Bacher, one of my students from the Netherlands, he flew in for that and had, uh, mm -hmm. You know, he not made that spreadsheet to invest time in his schedule to see if he could do it. Uh, he couldn't have made that trip and made those friends and had that life experience. So that's what it's all about. Yeah. It's about transforming your life yeah. into a, a lifestyle that is liberty on your terms, right? And nobody else's terms. And then having the financial yeah. acumen to be able to bring money in on demand when you need it and to be able to do the work that backs up, uh, that backs that up with value. And you can do it over and over. It takes away your scarcity, unlimits your future. And it really sets a strong foundation because all the skills in the course are good for families to bond together. They're good for husbands and wives. They're good for parents and their children. They're good for neighbors to interact with, right? Because yeah. sometimes people yeah. can get high stress. Be the calm, cool, collected yeah. people. 
that have been there before, seen it, have a plan. I know how this can work and we can, you know, be the optimist who can take action and put it into mm-hmm. motion. And I think that's indispensable in the world. And it's going to carve out a different future for anybody who takes the time to invest that seriously in themselves. It takes work, yep. but it's very doable. And that's easy right. And yeah, move. If you do it right. Right. If you're around a bunch of good people doing the same work and learning too and sharing ideas, um, it can be a very inspiring and fun because this is, hey, if we're not having fun, we're doing it incorrectly. Um, life is really a precious thing. And so how to do it using our time. And this is what's a really a strange thing. I, I looked up the amount of time. If you convert how much taxes the state takes from us, conservatively called a third and over a 45 year career, that's 15 years of your life that they have stolen from you, taxation is theft, robbery, extortion. And so what can you do to avoid that? Well, perhaps start your own business and there's different tax strategies. I don't know if that's in the program. This is a side note that uh, Jeff Bezos paid 0% taxes. I think it was on uh, $18 billion of profit recently. Amazing. But I I did see a report projecting by 2030 or 2035, that 50% of the workforce are going to be either freelance or small business owners because you see with Uber and Airbnb and they even have um, food deliveries on demand. They have um, restaurant workers on demand. Everything's pushing a button because there's decentralizing occurring, as you said. And so can you maybe speak a little bit about the importance of entrepreneurism and where you see that going here in the next five, eight, maybe 10, 12 years? All right. So Seth Godin has this really scary mini story. And he's like, basically, it's all being automated. It's all going to be outsourced mm-hmm. to AI. So yeah. the one example he gave is drive through windows at whatever restaurant. If the person's not even at the window taking your order, you're talking to a call center in North Dakota, and they're sending the order back to cook it and give to at the delivery window. There'll be a real person, I guess, until they get a robot. So what I focus on in autonomy, seeing technocracy rising and all that comes with it. Okay. Uh, what are the skills that they can't have algorithms or robots do very easily? Because those jobs will be yeah. indispensable in the future for a while yet, yeah. right? So that's the practical future that we're talking about. So if you're in a uh, checkout, because they said a lot, you know, a couple years ago, they said a lot of jobs in America is going to be clerks and checkout clerks, these sort of things. And I'm like, no, they're not. Cause they're making yeah. everyone do their self-checkout. They got that all that's under. Right. They're going to put RFIDs in all the products. They have prototypes of these stores. You just walk in, pick up the stuff and walk out and there you'll have no human interaction with anyone else. They'll just charge yeah. your card because it's all uh, proximity yeah. RFID, right? Yep. So that's yep. the future and uh, not a whole lot I can do about that. So I'm understanding and knowledgeable about things I can't control, but I don't worry okay. about them. I make plans of action over here. I'm, I'm more the fan yes. of how Bucky Fuller looked at these things, right? You can't, yes. uh, you can't fight the existing problem. You have to do something that makes it obsolete and don't fight forces. Use them see that those forces mm. exist see that the the mm. schooling system is purposely trying to dumb people down take that and mm. bring it with it create a suit like mm. a superb uh, uh simultaneous way for people to get their education and have that comparison and contrast let the market win out you know yeah we don't need everybody to like take our advice and, and do the things that we're saying as far as how to have a, a more enriching life than what the status quo is providing just the ones mm. who are interested Right. It's like showing up yeah. to a shipwreck. There's a bunch of people in the water and we're the Coast Guard. Who are we going to save? We can't save everybody. I'm going to save the people mm-hmm. who swim toward me and don't don't try to knock me out in the process. You know? <laughs> yeah. Now, it's um, really incredible that, you know, we can even have these conversations, you know, because of the Internet and like how technology. I love that you said, you know, understanding what we can control and what we can't control. Very important in becoming free and mentally free, you know, independent in our own minds. That's where it all begins, as uh, as you mentioned. And Bob so, Marley had it right: "Emancipate yourself from mental slavery, none but ourselves." That's free right. Minds. Hundred percent. And so, mass human consciousness is increasing. And so, I mean, this is another like trend or something that maybe you watch. And how can you put your work or your passions into that? But the other challenge is how do you get it out to the world? And so, one of the kind of growing trends and I think some of the transformational things that happen in the world is becoming our own media. These conversations are not going to be promoted on mainstream news, right? They got their own corporate interests, but we have our own personal interests, business, family, health, 
uh, community, perhaps um, intentional communities, maybe in physical reality, but using the internet is a really important thing. And does your course cover maybe some of the marketing or some of the strategies that people who have zero experience with internet marketing um, that they can learn through this course also? Yeah, I, I, it's like a buffet. So not everything on the buffet everyone needs. So I teach people like how to get a job, how to get a raise, how to transfer out of your corporate job into your own entrepreneurial endeavor, what things to do to like pave the way for that, make it much easier. But also if you want to be an entrepreneur with your own personal media platform, YouTube, uh, Instagram, these sort of things, there's a series of things that you can do to make that work pretty readily if you're providing some sort of value. That's the whole thing. People are like, well, how often should I publish my content? how often can you come up with value for people? Because why are yeah. you publishing if you're not, you know, some people are into publishing every day just to publish. That's not what I'm teaching. What I'm teaching yeah. is, um, and I have several students who have either upped their production value or started their show after thinking about it for a long time and using the exercises in the course as the excuse to do that. So one of my yeah. students, Chris McMillan, uh, who I don't know if you've met him, but he, uh, he knows of your work for sure. Uh, the first person he interviewed after I taught the exercise of how to do an interview like uh, I taught people how to do it on audio. He went on video and got James Corbett. <laughs> and now he has, uh, you know, his, his truth conduit, uh, media platform, which, uh, he already has a cool day job. This is a great hobby, but it also lets him you know, practice his active literacy skills, right? Communication is a skill we use all day, every day, and we are not trained. And most, the fact that most people are scared to do public speaking. Let me break that down for a minute. That's artificial. Yeah. We are not scared yeah. as babies of public speaking. Otherwise, we would never get our needs met. That had to happen from a separation of us from our parents for an extended period of time and over and over and over again, ask for permission to do this and that, all these sort of layers right. of indoctrination that are, I understand why they do it. They want to control people, right? Okay, I get that. Yeah. But yes. on our side of the agenda, we would like to be not controlled. So what do we have to do to see that and raise above that to level up from there? And what you need is investment of time, energy, attention around people in a, in a structure that av avails this, that you can gain the high value skills that you need to thrive in a variety of ever, uh, areas of life and travel wherever you want. They can't confiscate them. They can't tax them. They're between your ears. You can't lose them. And you, you, you don't leave the home without it. You know, you don't leave home without it because it's the skills you take out in the world every day to provide value to others. And that culture of excellence, the integrity and in providing value give you a low pressure area where you're not chasing business, these sort of things. You can establish strong relationships on demand and dig wells before you need the water. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, it really is. Um, preparing, you know, there's a storm coming. We see the federal reserve printing money. We see this whole system kind of gauging and, and pushing us towards more forced vaccines. You see Germany, the whole country mandated vaccines. And so you see something creeping and to be that person in your community who is kind of seeing what's on the horizon and taking action, not to be in fear, not to be in, in a worry or disempowerment, but to take that and use it as perhaps uh, the motivation that's like when you jump in a cold shower, you jump in a cold shower, you, you spread all that pain around because you get alive. You get awakened to what's happening and we're awakening to really what we can do as human beings with some kind of consciousness that want to take control of our lives. And also I see that um, consulting is one of the topics in the, uh, the program here I call autonomy. And when I heard the, first, the word consulting maybe three, four, five years ago, I thought it was some corporate term and I would never be that. But then once you realize consulting is just sharing your knowledge, sharing your experience in a way that serves other people and they will actually pay you for that. Can you talk about maybe about that module, the power of mentoring, of coaching and consulting for people that are that are watching this at home? I'm going to uh, hold that question because I wanted to also touch on the, the thing you were talking about with vaccines. Um, yeah, that's a that's a human ownership issue. Do you own your body and do you have the right yeah. to say what goes into it? And are you know, do you own your kids or does someone else like the state own your kids? That's a genesis. Yeah. That's the foundation root cause of that. 
And yeah. you know about that from Dell Big Tree. Like he does great work on that. So I have a lot of students that are homeschoolers, and some of those homeschoolers are also people who have chosen not to put untested co corporate chemicals into their child's bodies if they had a choice about it, right? So right. those people encounter uh, the friction of reality all the time. People who want to call them names and all these sort of things. Those are real life, heavy duty situations that sometimes cause stress, anxiety, frustration uh, throughout families, throughout social networks, these sort of things. So uh, we have a aspect of our dynamic learning environment called the, the real talk room. And when you encounter right. things in the world that is like, oh, they're criticizing me for homeschooling or they're criticizing this. Hey, let's learn how to actually talk through those those discussions so that you can be heard, yeah. they can be heard, you can all get your needs met. But it's not going to happen with a bunch of people throwing declarative sentences at, at each other at unscheduled times that aren't meant for that. Mm. So I, yeah. I kind of advise people to say, uh, if someone approaches you, and this is something you learn through, through the course because I have people set all these aspects up to have a meeting, right? So you have a Calendly mm. link, and when someone wants to meet with you, they click that, they get on your schedule. So someone has some important, they walk up to you at a Christmas party. Uh, let's pretend, I'll role play with you, Dave. You've got two kids and they're yep. not vaccinated and uh, I'm your father-in-law. So, hey, I heard mm -hmm. and the news, I'm worried and you're dumb. And you might say, hey, this isn't the appropriate place. And yeah. give me your Calendly link. And I'd say, okay, uh, let's talk then, right? Yeah. So you have a process in place. And I might even say uh -huh. something like... Uh, if I was in your position, I'd be like, hey, look, I'm really interested in the knowledge you have to share. Here's how I take in new knowledge. I, you know, <laughs> if you have a presentation, if you have some evidence or whatever, I'll look it all over. And I know you'll extend me yeah. the same courtesy in following, but I want to hear what you have to say first. So I've set up a time, mm. a place, a method of how I do this all the time to avoid conflicts mm. un that are unnecessary. And if that person isn't hip to that, they probably just like conflict. They love schadenfreude, right? The taking pleasure in other people's discomfort. And you don't need them really probably in your life too much until they're willing to actually have a conversation and exchange useful information. Now, getting back yeah. to your question of the consulting, that's one of the most mm -hmm. powerful areas of applying the skills because you're applying the skills of all the, the different areas. So as a consultant, I'll, I'll use a, a startup company that's local. So they had, uh, at the time I met them, they had a great product. They had invested $200,000 of their own money in the product. And they were at a point where they weren't able to make the next breakthrough, which was have conversations with the, who could give them a bridge loan and funding so they could keep continuing, right? So in that situation, I had already audited their website. So I went there thinking they need my copywriting help. They probably need uh, some sales training, these sort of things for their small organization. When I got there, so it went from like a couple thousand dollar problem to when I got there, many tens of thousands of dollars. And I basically yeah. explained, here's where you guys are. Here's where you're trying to be. Here's what you need to do from mm -hmm. your discussion. Here's what you don't know. Need, you, know you don't know how to do yet. And I can mm -hmm. help you to take those steps and do those things. Should you be interested? Yeah. Right. And then yeah. I didn't sell it for just one time. I said, I can only give you 10 hours a month and I only, you know, I'll do that over a year. Right. So it would spread out payments across a year. It's a hockey stick. I do a lot of work in the beginning and less work at the end because I have to come up to speed. And then I told them I needed a retainer to start work because I can't do $30,000 of work without some sort of down payment. And uh, yeah, so if you can talk people through those situations, showing them the guidance. Now, can they run into a problem that I don't know how to solve? Yes, but I know people in those areas that can mm -hmm. help solve that problem, right? And I take on the responsibility. The other thing as a consultant is if I'm doing what they tell me, I'm technically an employee as classified by the IRS, which surprises a lot of consultants. So from a consultancy mm -hmm. point of view, I take in information. I then prescribe actions. They can choose to take or not take those actions, right? So it's like the superset of all the, the individual a la carte skills that are in the course. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also a useful skill because you can apply it in so many different areas. Like we have people that are commun strategic communication consultants, like uh, um, people who are copywriting consultants, people who are startup consultants, people who are you need marketing now type of consultants, right? Because startup uh, is not the same thing as going and launching a product and actually getting your money back right from that process. Um, right. And all of these things are kind of out there disparately and disconnected. You could watch some YouTube videos, but you're not going to get the interactive feedback that you need in real time you're going to be left wondering and you're not going to have a place to experiment with the things you're learning to try those, uh, mm -hmm. those, those new pieces of wisdom out in life in a nerfed up area. You're going to be burning real leads in a sales situation. Mm -hmm. If you're out there, uh, that sort of thing. So I really took a lot of time to create multiple struck, multiple layers of, 
uh, support assurance. So if students are really trying to make progress, the support is there, right? So for people mm -hmm. who put in the effort, the support from everywhere rises to that. So it's, a, yeah. it's like an anti-fragile environment that's built with Buckminster Fuller 10 segregate in mind, right? Mm -hmm. You have integrity mm -hmm. to the individual parts and then they become stronger by being together voluntarily. Mm. No, that's amazing. Yeah, having the like the philosophical um, foundation and then putting it into tactical things, I think is really important because we want to help freedom grow, right? It's not just about money. It is about getting free from our, from our own maybe corporate position or our own uh, kind of mental change or career chains, but then being an example and helping people grow around us and then supporting that and contributing to this community, um, I think it's something that uh, people should be you know, uh, aware of because that's like one of the strengths of it, you know, the, um, the synergy of it all and the, the, the unity that it's like a win-win type outcome for um, freedom and independence and these kind of things. So this is, this is a really exciting course, I got to say, um, as I'm talking with you more and more. And you mentioned before, like you have graduates. So they go through the course and, you know, as we know, li lear learning is lifelong, right? The only way we become um, unstoppable or, or bulletproof is to learn how we learn. You know, self-knowledge is the key. How, how do I learn? How do you learn? People watching this. And then if you learn how you learn, your style, your preferences, then you, you'll be able to change with technology, with the economy, with all these new inventions, and ideas, and trends. And so being part of the graduate community, I think will have some long-term value um, rather than the, the, tw the 12 week course, which is um, really uh, empowering too. But the community, the graduate, what happens afterwards? Um, you mentioned that's kind of when the real work begins. Um, what kind of insight do you have? Because you've been running this for at least um, a season or two, correct? Yeah, that, uh, we had our autonomy, autonomy, the anniversary of autonomy uh, <laughs> yesterday or the day before. So I started the course uh, November. Yeah, yeah, thank you. November 20th, I think it was. Um, so graduation. Graduation means you've been through the course. You've maybe uh, tackled your first two big problems. For a lot of people, it's their introversion and it's their learned helplessness, their provisional self-esteem, these sort of things, right? So coming into the course is a, a variety of ways the course can add value to your life. But what I encourage people on uh, is to like, if you have a big problem, just focus on one thing. If you get a couple small ones, take those. And then the second time you go through the course, you're going to see all these other places where you can add value and utility and skill to your life that you missed the first time because you're so busy fixing your first two problems, right? So yeah. uh, the thing that's thrilling to me is that students who graduated in season one maintained their level of interest and activity through the interim during the summer. Um, at one point in July, we did a, a mid-season meet and greet. That went for six hours. Yeah. By the time we started again in September, we had another meet and greet with new students who had joined since then. That was also six hours. And that's the graduates yeah. explaining to the new students how they grew and the new students kind of explaining to the graduates um, what they're looking to get. Right. Yeah. So that aspect uh, and the fact that the course is growing. So it's not just uh, what I have in the lectures. We also have activities almost every day of the week now for tutorials and refinement on the skills and people who are actually going out in the life, practicing the skills, coming back with real life examples so we can help them grow and, and get past that next challenge. So what people are looking for, it's very simple. It's a, it's a, it's something that's a result of skills you don't have or need to refine and several yeah. mini breakthroughs that lead up to that major breakthrough. So the encouraging okay. thing that I try to do is I get, I try to get people to a breakthrough in the enrollment call. And if that doesn't happen, it happens in the first couple of weeks of the, the course, just starting to interact in this new environment that, that we've created that really helps people up their game in life. And then from there, the bigger breakthroughs are a lot easier to do, right? So if you want to go work out every day and you don't like doing that, and it's really like, you know, it's making you cringe when you think about it, then I'd say, don't do it. Go okay. sit in the parking lot of the gym, like just get there. Because I'm pretty sure yes. if you get there and sit in the parking lot, you'd probably go inside and work out, right? Or if you don't like right. getting up at 4 a.m. in the morning, you don't have to get up. You can go back to bed, but you can't be yeah. in bed. So you got to go do it on the couch or someplace else. If you get up and start your body, you're probably not going to go lay down someplace else, right? Or maybe you're mm -hmm. getting up too early. I also encourage students to get lots of rest and to have your schedule make sense for you. Uh, for the past <laughs> year, I've run my mornings uh, I, you know, from the time I wake up till about 11 a.m. or sometimes 1 p.m. I spend time with my family 
because that's when my three-year-old son is alive and awake and like outside wanting to do stuff. Otherwise, I'd be upstairs saying, oh, it's not right now. I got to work. And then by the time I'm done with work, which goes on until sometimes late night, I wouldn't have time. So I try to get like the, the, the suck the marrow out of life early in the day. Like have that family time, have that connection time and then break off, do some emails, break off, do some editing, uh, break off, do a meeting, these sort of things and come back and keep, you know, playing Nerf darts, shooting targets in the yard or flying a kite or, you know, whatever (laughs) he wants to do, dig in the sandbox. I do all these things almost every day of the week. One of those things like that he wants to do, because I'm out there, you know, being a father with him at the time Mm -hmm. when it's really important to him to have that influence of like hey dad there's turkeys or there's deer or whatever right i want to be there and have those experiences and that to me is much it's worth so much more than all those uh big checks i made in the corporate world Mm -hmm. yeah spending time with the children has got to be one of the most best and rewarding investments of time ever because you're going to be around this young guy you know for decades he's going to be around you and there's actually um, joy in watching each other grow and evolve as humans and having memories. And, you know, we would just lose that. And so I have so much respect for you parents who are homeschooling or thinking about homeschooling. It is the future, in my opinion, you know, and if you have um, kind of that evol- evolution of, of education where you go from homeschooling to unschooling or self-directed learning in, in, um, in general, that really is the future. And this is what we're talking about at the adult level with autonomy is to direct ourselves and if you want to go do work, go do it. If you want to play, play, but be conscious of it and not um, kind of reactionary towards the advertisements or towards our habits. And we're breaking new habits. And I want to bring up one other thing before we cut loose. Because do you have I it written you... down? Do you have it written down? <laughs> Which one of the habits? No, go ahead. I'll remember my No, 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 go ahead. I was just going to say no, that my no. parents get stuck. They're like, they're in corporate world. Their kids are in public school and they say it's impossible. We can't do that. If you can get past the idea of impossible and think maybe it is possible, what would it take to do that? You can learn your way out of that situation, both in the cubicle, getting to your own business or something that gets you closer, at least working from home and giving your kids at least the option. They might want to go to public school because of the socialization factor that they feel like culture and friends and stuff like that. At least you can then inoculate them with the right information so that they can maintain their integrity as they go through that system. But other times parents are like, I'd like my kid to be unschooled or I'd like to travel around the world and teach them about the world by being there and applying the skills I learned in autonomy to wherever I am because they need copywriting or graphics or web design in all these different countries. I have some students that speak up to like five languages, polyglots. And when I teach some of these skills, I say, uh, does this apply for all your clients in these countries? Yes, it does. So it's the high level level Uber skills that allow you to do all these little refinements and really leapfrog their whole bullshit system. Pardon my French. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. We can drop all types of SH and it. Absolutely. No, it is. And full self-expression is super important too. Um, and really the courage that you took as, you know, to become a homeschool mother or father, wherever you're at in the world, that's, that's a skill, right? So every skill is learnable, whether it's courage, self-expression, um, health, push-ups, exercise, we can learn. And so once we throw the idea out the window that we're a finished product or that we're limited because of Mrs. Jones in the second grade or Mr. Smith in the 11th grade or whatever it is. Hey, God bless the humanity in those people, but they were teaching it from a curriculum from the state that had been designed decades before, had nothing to do with you or your talents or your abilities, which is why I want to bring up this um, final topic or we can keep going here is the, the topic of failure because we learn in school, if you get under like 59%, then we're a failure but in the business world, if you had 59 successes out of 100, you'd be a fucking rock star. I mean, this is huge, right? Like 10% of businesses fail in five years and another 10% fail in the next five years. So you have a very small chance of having a business for 10 or 20 years without failure, but it's the skills that you learn in that failure. So could you talk about the importance of failure and how your program kind of puts it on its head and, and, and reframes the paradigm of failure? Yeah, a lot of people think of failure is uh, a bad thing. And in some cases, failure can be final and it's not a good thing, especially if it ends in your death or someone else's death, right? But otherwise, uh, aside from those examples of extremity, what I teach in the generality is micro failures. Fail fast, fail early, succeed sooner. I believe it was you, Dave, who said 
failure is not final, it's feedback. Because when you said it, I wrote it down on an index card. And then I think I put it in a lecture a couple of weeks later because I was like, that's good. And I don't know where you heard that. And I don't care. I just wanted to be like, Dave said this the other night. And you guys should check it out. <laughs> it's the Amen. feedback you need to improve and grow. So being afraid to fail is saying, I'm afraid of the feedback that it actually takes me to grow and make this breakthrough. That's the thing mm -hmm. that holds you back in that situation. So in an enrollment call, somebody might serve me uh, like, uh, you know, people who are interested and have the cash flow, they enroll. Right. People who are interested and don't have the cash flow, sometimes I get like the excuse email and I just point out to them like, hey, this thing that you're using as the excuse in this case, cash flow just points to the need for having high value skills that cash flow is never a problem for you going forward because you understand how to provide value. Like you understand how to initiate contact, ask questions, understand and think and then present that as how to add value. And if you can do that, structure it as an offer and you do that with enough times in front of the right people, you will go forward in business is what you're talking about. If I fail yeah. uh, nine times out of 10 in business, that's still a lot of times success, right? Yeah. If I have an email I send out to a, a list of 2000 people and uh, nine out of 10 people don't read that, but 10% engage with that offer, that's success. Right. Well, I'm not talking to the people who aren't interested. I'm talking to the people who are the ones who do want to make a change, the ones who have had enough of the rat race and are looking for the exit. Right. And it's not a whole lot of work, but it is enough work to make it a legitimate, not too good to be true type of thing. The, the traction is uh, gainable and it's readily available. Right. You can stop spinning your wheels and you can actually learn how to steer it and get to where you want to go in life. I think that's a serious opportunity. And the people who understand it's a serious opportunity, they get in pretty quick. And I don't need to f argue or fight or convince or persuade or connive or anything because what I teach is, well, the way, I'll give you an insight. The way I teach sales is to have a conversation and ask questions, gain useful information and help them solve and facilitate the solving of a high value problem. It's high right. value problem solving. We have problems in the world. They have high value. We're not making people who are trained to solve these problems, right? They right. think they need to come up with a solution and push it down everyone's throat. That's not the art of sales. So just understanding yeah. how to ask the questions that lead to you being able to provide value and listening during that period, super valuable skill. Can't put a price on that. Can't buy it on Amazon. That alone That's pays right. for the course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just knowing that it's a, it's a lifelong, you know, we have to do it ourselves. This is not a lottery ticket, you know, with this kind of instant gratification that we're taught for decades and in movies even like i love watching the uh, the rocky movies you know he goes from a nobody to a somebody in three and a half minutes that's not real that takes months you know it takes years and so to again reframe what success looks like and what we have to invest and this is an investment in yourself in your mind in your heart in your family so that you can change your family's life their generation uh, impact perhaps and so I think this is probably the most exciting part because I went to college for five years junior college university and I got a business degree yeehaw how much did it cost it was over 50 grand I spent five years and what did I really get from it truly I got maybe four or five buddies you know who I'm still in contact with I respect and love and I learned something about concentration and fragment markets. That was one, one takeaway from the strategic marketing class, or strategic business class I got. But other than that, I got almost no value. And so I think it might be pertinent and relevant for the viewers to learn from you. What is the investment cost? What are the phases? How can they get involved if they want to? And maybe the application process, as we mentioned before, it's not just for money. You know, we want to build something great here for the community, for themselves, and really make sure to match on both sides. But if it is, what are the, the ways they can get involved with the autonomy program? All right. So I don't list the pricing publicly because I don't want people scaring themselves off thinking they need a bigger package than what they need. So the way that I conduct it is. The, the landing page for the course is getautonomy.info. And if you need a forward slash, it would be Ignite. Although I think right now the page just goes to the landing page. Um, on there, there's a call to action. It says, take your next step. That takes you to a page that has a short video from me that explains a survey and why I ask these questions. And if you ask, if I ask the questions and you answer them, it takes you to the next step to get on my schedule to have a conversation. 
at the end of that conversation, I'll have an idea of where you've been, where you're trying to go, how fast you're trying to get there, these sort of things, what skills you'd need. And you'll have a plan of action that doesn't include necessarily joining the course, right? So you're getting value, you're getting a plan, a better plan than you probably have coming into the call. And then you're getting some options. What I can say is 75 to 80% of the people who make it through that process to the call and don't get scared off by the questions, they enroll. And some of them have cash flow challenges, but that's not the prime thing I'm looking for. The prime thing I'm looking for are good candidates who are positively motivated to make these breakthroughs because they're the ones who are going to be successful and be good colleagues and fellow students for everyone else who's in there for the students and grads. Right. So primarily it's yeah. finding the people who have the need and the inclination. And if you're lacking in cash flow, there's a variety of ways that we've gotten people past that challenge. What I can say is it doesn't happen if you just say that course is too expensive and you never communicate that. And I just like, okay, I can't help people that don't communicate. Those who do communicate, I end up building relationships with them because I'm not interested in doing business today. I'm interested in providing you value on a long-term period. Now, that being said, right. I'm going to contradict that because the course is a one-time fee. You get lifetime access right now. And so I am building a relationship in reality, but I'm not gonna be relationship building by giving, like telling you, you gotta give me a thousand bucks a month or something. So the course right now is uh, for the lectures and the future seasons uh, in Discord access. Uh, it's all lifetime membership for season two. Now in a few weeks when I launch season three, I'm not gonna be doing that anymore. But this is the time to seize the day, check out the opportunity, see if it's right for you, because the people I want to help first are the people in your audience and Corbett's audience and other people who are liberty minded, independent freedom producers who are speaking with parhesia, putting wisdom into the world and could use a little lift, a little air under their wings at this time of year. So I want to help those who are helping themselves, help other people to be empowered through that process. And so it's a. Uh, it's a design to make to be a tide that raises all ships. It's a win-win-win si yes. situation that we've architected here. Yes, yes. It's for some of the people who have no idea what parhesia means, as I did, it just means full expression. Say what you're going to say. We have no time to sit there. You know, Rich signs off his emails, carpe diem, seize the day and seize the moment. Understand, this is the kind of the the push and pull of life. We might live another fifty years. Or it might be over tomorrow. You know, we just you know hope that it's it's a long term thing. And I also want to share that, you know, the, the great quote from Lao Tzu said that the journey of a thousand leagues starts with one step, that first step. And so whatever you feel that that is for you, maybe going to the form and submitting an application, or perhaps even enrolling in the program, we know that the future is going to be more uh, turbulent than it is today for our kids and for our grandkids. And if you can become the model, if you're the parent or if you're the student, you know, if you're in your teens, you know, if you can become that example and show them the way or one way, you know, we're unique as our thumbprints, our DNA, you're one amongst seven, eight billion humans alive. And that's one of your strengths, your uniqueness. Nobody can take that away, your own desires, your own goals and dreams. And that's what I say is if you choose to apply and then take the next step, come with a goal, come with a dream because this is an environment where, where we are helping you, empowering uh, whatever you want to create in your life. And I, I just want to thank you know, Richard Grove for taking some time out to share about this and putting in the years to create this program that is so necessary. And if you haven't seen some of the work he's done with the previous um, interviews and productions, he's done really amazing things. So you can rest assured that what's inside is just as exquisite and helpful and useful because there are major problems that we're facing and he created this program to help you and everyone out there who has uh, some type of desire or some urge to learn and grow and create the life that they love become the author of their life not an unwitting actor as we learned from Gatto. and that's not just some kind of funny quote it's a real thing and we're to help to do this as together you know as a community if you want so go to that link here we'll put the link below and uh, any final a thoughts, Rich, before we uh, disconnect for this particular conversation? Well, first off, I just wanted to thank you for uh, giving me the invitation because I think it's it's valuable for those who are interested. And for those who aren't interested, you don't want anything to do with autonomy, that's cool too. Go to YouTube, uh, search Ultimate History Lesson. Maybe that'll benefit you. Or uh, hashtag Smart Reads. I've produced some sort of value that'll likely benefit you. And if you come around the autonomy later, cool. And if not, 
I know you'll be having a prosperous life where you're not left wanting. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Check out the ultimate history lesson groundbreaking about the school system, which we're all a part of at some point. And you guys are homeschooling. So you guys kind of feel something wrong, whether it's the force vaccines or the sex ed curriculum or the plethora of other problems in the school system. You got to spend like this one senator wants to spend eight or 10 more hours like, you know, per week. No, we're removing our children from the school system. You are leading them. You're the example. You're creating an environment where personalized learning can occur. I'm so glad you're part of this community, the Freedom Lover Show, and everything else we're going to be creating as we move forward together. So uh, thanks for taking some time out, Rich, and the audience member here for watching because we're going to keep producing and helping you know, in our own little way. You know, and This is why it is the Freedom Lover Show. We love it. We want to help grow it and expand it and do whatever we can to create intergenerational freedom and build a voluntary world one relationship at a time. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time here on the show. And uh, other than that, keep spreading peace, love, and freedom worldwide. Bye, everyone.